application of molecularly imprinted polymers in chemosensors fabrication. This research was done in Institute of Physical Chemistry in Warsaw uh, in two research groups, group of uh, molecular films and group of functional polymers. So firstly, I will tell you the basis of molecular imprinting. So in this approach, we take molecule that serves as template. We choose functional monomers that can interact with this template with different kind of interaction. As, and we uh, allow those uh, monomers to arrange themselves around this template molecule. And then we go for polymerization in presence of cross-linking monomer. After removal of the template molecule from the polymer matrix, we end up with uh, imprinted cavities that fit exactly with size, shape, and distribution of interactions to the molecule of template. Therefore, those cavities can uh, recognize selectively and bind selectively only this template molecules in presence of uh, other molecules in, in uh, mixtures. So for um, fabrication of chemosensors, it is necessary to deposit those polymers in form of very thin films on the surface of uh, sensor. Therefore, uh, electropolymerization is method of choice. In this, using this approach, we can limit polymerization process only to the surface of the electrode. Moreover, we can easily tune thickness and morphology of the deposited films. In our institute, we have uh, applied thin films of molecular imprinted polymers for fabrication of numerous different uh, selective chemosensors. So there are many different types of uh, polymers that can be electropolymerized. In our group, we focus mostly on polythiophenes because uh, thiophene monomers are quite easy to be derivatized. Therefore, we have access to whole library of functional monomers that can interact uh, with template molecules with different uh, kinds of interactions. For example, hydrogen bonds or uh, supramolecular interactions. So in this project, we have imprinted paracinephrine, hazardous uh, dietary supplement, and this monomer formed a stable complex of one to three stoichiometry with a template molecule, and this monomer served as a cross-linking agent. So after deposition, uh, of uh, thin film, we wanted to, to fabricate voltammetric sensor. However, this analyte is not electroactive. Therefore, you you have, we have to add redox probe to, to the solution and then binding of uh, analyte inside of the film uh, influence oxidation of this redox probe. As you can see, with increase of paracinephrine concentration, this DPV peak uh, was decreasing. So therefore, we were able to construct calibration cure for our target analyte and for uh, interfering compounds. Uh, however, in this project, we wanted to look closer into mechanism of this response because previously it was assumed that uh, binding of analyte inside of the MIP film causes its shrinking or and then contra contraction of pores uh, of the polymer and then uh, diffusion of this redox probe to the electrode surf surface is, uh, is affected. However, in case of uh, conductive polythion film, it occurred that it is not a case. So uh, during uh, in-situ IFM uh, measurements of the thickness of the film, we have proven that this film doesn't swell at all uh, in presence of analyte, 
Palace in a frame. So it was also uh, concluded from SPR measurements that no swelling can be observed within after injection of analyte. Moreover, using electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, we also saw that uh, binding of analytes inside of the mid film influence charge transfer resistance. So influence uh, transfer of electron from electrode to uh, to redox probe, but no changes were visible in this part of spectra, which is responsible for diffusion of the redox probe. So we have concluded that uh, in case of conductive MIPs, the mechanism of response is different and uh, drop of the redox current of redox probe is caused by changes of uh, film conductivity, not by, in, by hampered uh, diffusion of the redox probe. Moreover, it seems that in this case, this oxidation of redox probe doesn't occur on the electrode surface, but rather on the uh, conductive polymer uh, solution interface. Therefore, somehow this transduction phenomena is partially separated from uh, recognition of the analyte that happens inside of the polymer film. Therefore, we have decided to immobilize redox probe inside of the MIP film. Moreover, we have we tried to check if um, diffusion of the redox probe is not important factor for the sensor response. Maybe it is not uh, necessary at all. So therefore, we have immobilized this uh, ferrocene moieties inside of the polymer film just by copolymerization of monomer containing ferrocene with our functional monomers. Moreover, during optimization of this process, it occurred that it is necessary also to copolymerize source of counter ions that will compensate positive charge form formed on this first redox active center during its oxidation. Moreover, addition of uh, ionic liquid to the polymerization solution uh, gave us additional porosity of the film, so surface development and easier uh, diffusion of ions from solution to, to, to the film. So in this case, we were able to observe nice drop of the uh, redox current of the ferrocene uh, due to mining of the analyte inside of the polymer. We have constructed a calibration curves, and as you can see, the sensitivity in this case, sensitivity of the sensor is uh, more than 100 times higher than uh, previously with similar uh, selectivity. So we went also for detailed uh, studies of uh, mechanism of, of this uh, transduction using both uh, electrochemical methods like cyclic voltammetry and also using electrochemical quartz crystal microbalance and uh, electrochemical SPR. So we were able to observe uh, uh, transport of ions during oxidation and reduction of those ferrocenium, ferrocenium moieties uh, immobilized inside of the uh, polymer. So then we were able to conclude with uh, and propose this mechanism of response that oxidation of ferrocenium causes uh, both ingress of uh, anions from solution to the polymer and uh, cations are being, being expelled from polymers from polymer to the solution and moreover it seems that after binding of the analyte this ingress of uh, anions from solution to the polymer is more more uh, affected than the second process so however the immobilization of uh, redox probe inside of polymer uh, gave us because that this phenomena happens in the same place as molecular recognition, therefore 
sensitivity of this sensor is 100 times higher than uh, before. Moreover, there is no need to prepare samples prior to the measurement. So therefore we have applied the sensor for successful determination of paracinephrine in a real sample of dietary supplement. In another project that I would like to present today, we have challenged uh, imprinting of proteins. Proteins are very difficult templates to be imprinted because they are very fragile. Moreover, the they possess a very large number of uh, functional groups, mostly amine and carboxylic present on the, on the surface. Moreover, it is very difficult to predict, predict which of those groups are exposed on the surface and which of them are hidden inside of the protein. Therefore, it is very difficult to find proper uh, molar ratio of functional monomers to template. And moreover, those monomers also would interact with each other, not only with the uh, protein. Therefore, we went for semi-covalent imprinting. That is, we have labeled this protein molecule with uh, functional monomers by formation of covalent uh, amide bonds. Then this derivatized uh, protein was uh, purified and isolated using size explosion chromatography. So for sensor fabrication, we have used, uh, we have deposited colloidal crystal of silica beads on the surface of the electrode. Then this labeled protein was deposited, on, was immobilized on the surface of those beads and a polythiophene film was grown in the, inside in empty voids of this colloidal crystal. So after removal of beads and protein molecules, we have obtained hierarchically structured uh, polythiophene film. Uh, because of colloidal crystal template, we were able to uh, achieve inverse opal structure of, of this polythiophene film. Moreover, all imprinted cavities were located only on the inner walls of those pores, and Mm. Functional monomers were copolymerized only in the inner walls of those cavities. So we, we had uh, control over the structure of this deposited uh, material on the three levels of, uh, of size. So moreover, the procedure of a <coughs> electropolymeriz polythiophene electropolymerization was uh, optimized to such extent that this polymer was growing slowly from the bottom of the, from the electrode surface to the top of the colloidal crystal. Therefore, we were able to observe some fluctuations of current uh, when consecutive uh, monolays of colloidal crystal were being coated with uh, polythiophene. Here on the same image, you can see four layers of Colloidal crystal uh, formed from four layers of silica beads, and two and a half of those beads were coated with polymer. Therefore, we have ended up with uh, pores, open pores after removal of those beads. So, and this uh, macroporous uh, MIP coated electrode was applied for fabrication of selective. Uh, EG fed uh, chemo sensor. So, due to location of all recognition sites on the on the surface of uh, polymer and uh, develop and surface development, we have achieved very very high sensitivity of the sensor and uh, detection limits of in femtomolar concentration range. However, if we look more carefully on those same images, we can see that because of consecutive steps of chemical modification, structure of this uh, colloidal crystal was affected. And uh, it is hard to call this final MIP structure really inverse opal. It is more, more similar to 
to colloidal glass than, than uh, inverse opal. There, therefore, we went for optimization of this process. Firstly, we have add additional step of heating of this colloidal crystal to increase adhesion of, of those bits to each other. Moreover, the protein was firstly, in this next project, the protein was firstly uh, immobilized on the surface of the bits and uh, modification was uh, done later. Because of that, this process was much easier because all modifications were done just by immersing electrode in proper solution and just by taking it out and washing with proper solvents. No purification, no chromatographic resolution was necessary uh, in this case. Moreover, as you can see on those same images, uh, this additional heating step in increased uh, adhesion of, of those uh, silica bits to each other to such extent that this uh, structure of uh, colloidal crystal was not affected by uh, consecutive uh, chemical modification steps. Uh, therefore, during deposition of uh, polythiophene, uh, those fluctuations of current was, were much, much more pronounced. And because of that, we were able to coat exactly two and a half layers of the beads. And after removal of the beads, also this uh, inverse opal uh, structure was maintained. As you can see in here, all pores are open, all, all pores are interconnected because, and because of that, the much higher uh, population of recognition sites, sites was accessible for uh, analyte to, to be recognized. Therefore, we were able to uh, determine our target protein in much broader concentration range starting from uh, <coughs> from a single femtomoles ending up with uh, uh, with nanomoles. So in this case, we have also very good uh, selectivity with respect to three uh, proteins. Only human serum albumin uh, caused also some response of the sensor. In this case, we have used different uh, transduction methods. Uh, we were measuring changes of uh, capacity of, of the electrochemical double layer. So both uh, projects uh, resulted in several uh, research papers in high quality journals and five patent awarded patents. I would like to acknowledge uh, my collaborators, mainly uh, members of uh, both research groups in which I was employed and mostly PhD students that performed most of the experimental work uh, shown on those uh, during this presentation and also our external collaborations and uh, financing agency for financial support thank you for your kind attention